got the glasses in and I, I didn't even pour it. <laughs> Bet you can guess uh, what we're having. It is Stella Rosa, but it's not pineapple. I went with this, the peach. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Peach and pork just seems to go well in my head. Well, I must try all the flavors. Yes. All the, all the wonderful flavors from the Stella Rosa label, courtesy of the Riboli family. Here, you can, you can have the bigger one. Thank you. Because <laughs> I'm going to pour more for myself. That's a good a peach. Uh. God bless the Riboli. Yes. Happy Sunday, everybody. My name's Anthony, and if this is your first time watching, I'm going through every dish mentioned in The Sopranos. And if you haven't yet, please click subscribe in the lower corner right over here, and let's go to get started. So we are in season one, episode seven, Down Neck. Tony's in therapy. He's talking about this memory that he has from way back in the day, about the same time period that The Many Saints of Newark, the new prequel movie, takes place in. Hey, did you hear the game last night? Joey Pepitone, three RBIs. No kidding. My mom made me go to bed. Anthony, why aren't you on your way to school? You missed your bus. You want to walk to the color neighborhood. Junior, big fancy car. We're going to my sister's tonight, and you promised to bring a pork ba, 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 non-stop. Don't you get sick of yourself? Now, in the scene, Livia doesn't actually specify pork loin with the bone in, but I am also going through the Soprano Family Cookbook, and Entertaining with the Sopranos. And page 192, they have a recipe for roast pork loin, and this one specifies bone in. If you look at it, it looks an awful lot like prime rib on beef. If you look at like the butcher map, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> the butcher chart, we're gonna go with chart. Chart, chart. we're going with chart. If you look at the butcher chart, of a pig and a cow. This is essentially the prime rib of pork. So, Cameron, this is gonna bring back memories. Cameron, this is filmed in front of a live studio audience, just like Friends was, and mine is my friend Cameron. So anyways, uh, he was here for the prime rib episode and now he gets here to be here for the pork prime rib <laughs> episode. I'll put a link in the description of the prime rib, but pretty much the recipe is basically the same. Okay, Wendy got here. So anyways, Cameron pointed out that this does kind of resembles an anatomy class human. One of human's nicknames from cannibals is a uh, long pig. Supposedly we're pork-like. So do with that what you will. So anyways, finely chopped minced garlic. I of course added more than the recipe says. A finely chopped uh, rose, fresh rosemary, salt and pepper to taste, and there's olive oil because because like I said, this is basically the same way that I did the prime rib. Put it fat side up, take a small paring knife, and put in some slices. I need to totally shout out my buddy Eddie at Woody's Butcher Block. I called him up this afternoon, and I'm like, hey man, sorry for the short notice, but I'm filming tonight. You got some pork loin for me? He's like, yeah, bro, I got you. Okay, so get yourself a small bowl, and mix together the garlic and the rosemary on this quest to the Holy Grail. Um, oh yeah. Some of the, I just filled this thing up with pepper. I'm not gonna use it all. Make sure to use kosher salt. You know, it is Hanukkah. Uh -huh. So make sure to use kosher salt on the pork. I was hoping one of you would catch the joke, but. <laughs> kosher salt on pork. pork. Oh yeah. yeah. I used to always think that was kind of funny. I read uh, pork recipes before and I was like, if you're using kosher salt, isn't it kind of, not, not do, doesn't it not matter at this point <laughs> yeah. that you're eating pork? But actually, for everybody else who didn't know like I didn't, kosher salt isn't so much just the fact that it's kosher. It's also got a specific grain on it. So it, because of the specific grain, it has a different texture and it kind of has like a roughness to it. So it can like really get into a protein and kind of basically it urchins its way into a protein the same way an urchin does into coral. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt, a little bit more. I'm doing ratatouille style cooking right now. Oh yeah. My nose, <laughs> my nose told me. Oh, oh. Come on, you got grandkids. Can you ever watch that movie like 50,000 times? <laughs> my grandkids say, Grandma, you fell asleep again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried watching it with 
watching Frozen, I started it six times. And then you just let it go, huh? I let it go. All right, I'm about to hit the sneezing point, so that means there's enough pepper. Okay, now, yeah. the recipe says to, at this point, take the seasoning mixture and put it in and make sure it's all rubbed in. However, if you remember last time, when I did the beef prime rib, link in the description, so we try it out. Um, I did the oil first and then did the seasoning. By the way, you should have, <laughs> by the way, you should have, uh, you know what, maybe I should have invited you back to film this. I told you I'd be laughing. By the way, if you haven't yet, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it like I did it last time. I'm gonna do olive oil first and then seasoning. Uh, the books says you only need about two tablespoons. Like the Mori meme says, that was a lie. I use way more than two tablespoons on this. Treating it like a Roman gladiator, covering it in olive oil. As you're doing this rubbing process, make sure you get the seasoning all up into these cuts. I really should have started this before you guys out here. Because we get to hang out for an hour and a half now. <laughs> yeah? Hey, remember, this mic is super sensitive. <laughs> yes, like you, Cameron. Okay, so at this point, it's going to go into the oven. If you're in a Latino household, make sure you've cleaned out all the pans that are already in the oven, like I did before I started filming. <laughs> and uh, put it in for about an hour and a half or until the internal temperature at the center reaches 150 degrees. It is pork. We're not trying to get trigonosis here. I warned you, so you can't sue me at this point. Now, kitchen timer, hour and a half. Enjoy some wine. There is a sign as you drive out of Brooklyn that says, who gives up? <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. I gotta Google that. <laughs> Reasonable amount of quiet on the set. <laughs> and so he continues talking. Margaret joined us now, so Cameron's all excited. Timer went that. off. I checked the temperature, internal temperature at the center. And, and now Wendy. Yeah, I've been alive. I was talking. You were talking over my talking. Anyways. Where was I? Temperature is and over so one. Are you though? Yeah. Temperature is over 150 I'm in the sorry. center. <laughs> what is this? Amateur hour? <laughs> hey, look at that. I found the foil. We can make our alien protection hats now. Yeah. <laughs> and just, and I know it looks delicious and you're tired of waiting because you've already waited like an hour and a half minimum, but, but we're going to wait another 10 minutes because it's good to let meat rest. And uh, I'm going to let the zucchini our side vegetable rest also. So that's it. Oh, where's my wine? I actually switched over to whiskey, but it was peach whiskey and we were drinking peach wine. So at least it goes together. Yeah. Oh yeah, the whiskey is amazing. I have to try this. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's very young. No. Oh, I, I shot it right now. Sip. No. Sip, Sip it. Okay, well, yeah. it looks like a little... I shot it. Wait, the shot I've been working on this for like the last... 40 minutes or something. Yeah, but you need to turn the shot glass. It looks like it's a, a glass. little mini wine glass. It's a mini wine glass. It's the amount of alcohol it takes to get my mom drunk. You want, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go time. Yeah. I always put the. Oh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful place. view. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so is mine, Cameron. You handsome man, you. <laughs> His cheeks are turned Again, so pink I'm right now. His cheeks. <laughs> I just have so much fun when you come here. I just love it. You have learned from the master. Right? I have learned from the master. These are fancy chops. Woody's butcher block. I'm man. not so afraid. Ah, ah. I'm not so afraid to do this now. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. 
I still see the steam coming off of it and it's gonna burn, but I don't care because I want to eat it already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody does a better than him. That's pretty good. Nobody, nobody does. Are we having a moment again? I'm having another moment. Oh man, mouthgasm. Mouthgasm. Yeah. Mouthgasm. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so good. Um, you have to try this. If you haven't watched the prime rib video, it's almost the same thing, except this is pork. And this has got to be the best pork I've ever cooked. It's like the prime rib was the best prime rib I've ever made. So yeah. there you go. Next week, I am not going to be enjoying the meal as much as I'm enjoying this because next week the meal is clams. And as I've stated before, I don't like seafood. So. Tune in and watch me suffer. Yeah, well, I'm still gonna try it, because who knows, maybe I'll like it. Because I've never tried this recipe before. You should always try everything. If you don't like it after two or three tries, at least you can say you did, gave it a go, right? right? So anyways, tune in next week. If you hit the little bubble that's gonna appear right about here-ish, does that about look right, camera? Yeah. Okay, right about here-ish, there'll be a little bubble pops up. Hit that bubble, it'll subscribe you and all my social medias are scrolling at the bottom. Let me know how this recipe goes for you. Until next week, manja.